Ugh. I think the witch hat is too much. Oh yeah, it's definitely too much. Hey folks, my name is Jen, and today I'm here to let you in on what I plan to read for the month of October. It's hard to believe we are already here, but spooky season is upon us. For my TBR for October, I am planning on reading a few books, and the majority of those are going to be for the Boo to You readathon. Uh, this has been put on for the past few years by Emma, the bookish princess, and last year I did also attempt to uh, partake in the readathon but I didn't exactly finish it and I think the problem was was that I was picking just too many books for October. October tends to be a pretty busy month for me and considering this year when I haven't been having the greatest of looks uh, with my monthly TBR or really reading as much as I'd like um, I'm going to try to keep it a little bit of a smaller list-ish uh, for this month. So this year's theme for the readathon is based around the Haunted Mansion. The prompt is to basically pick uh, the script from the Haunted Mansion, whether the uh, Magic Kingdom or Disneyland Park version, and then Basically, you have to go through the script and pick out a phrase or um, however many phrases you want uh, from it that relate to books that you would like to read in the month. Um, Emma did suggest in her video that maybe this is like helpful because you can like, if you have books you already wanted to read in October anyway, well now you can work them in somehow with the phrases which was like a helpful helpful thing to say because that's actually what I ended up doing. Um, I want to say like three of the books, three or four of the books on the list were actually books that I wanted to read in October. So yeah I was able to find phrases within the scripts that worked and um, yeah I'll share with you these books that I've chosen. So I ended up using the script for the um, Disney World Park in Florida because that is the one that I've been to. I went there once when I was like 12. Um, I don't really remember too too much about the experience to be honest, but I do remember that I really love the Haunted Mansion and I would really wanted to go for a very long time. Um, so like I said, I've been there once several years ago. Um, so bear with me with my uh, reading of these uh, phrases from the script. <laughs> when hinges creak in doorless chambers and strange and frightening sounds echo through the halls, whenever candlelights flicker where the air is deathly still, that is the time when ghosts are present, practicing their terror with ghoulish delight. So basically, what this prompt reminds me of, from the hinges and doorless chambers to the sounds echoing through halls, the candlelight flickering, the, you know, ghoulish delight of ghosts, obviously the one book that comes to mind for that is like an Edgar Allan Poe collection. I got this in a previous book haul and I've been wanting to read more Poe. I've I've only ever re read like a couple of his short stories and poems, so I did um, set this aside to read in October anyway, and this just, I think it fits perfectly with like the atmosphere of Poe's writing. Um, so this is Ghostly Tales and Eerie Poems of him. I don't know if it's all of his works or if it's just like a selection of them, um, but yeah, I think this is going to, this like relates to that so well. And I'm really excited to get into more of his writing. Prompt 2. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Haunted Mansion. I am your host, your ghost host. This one might be 
slight stretch, I guess. But I figured what book about a haunted mansion, like the haunted mansion, could I read or would be more appropriate for me to read than the book of haunted mansions, like the prime book, which is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. So I have read this previously. Um, I read this in like 2018 or 2019. Um, I read an audiobook. I don't own a physical copy. And yeah, I found an audiobook on YouTube and listened to it. It was so good. Really creeped me out. Probably helped by the fact that I was so scared of the Netflix show I had to stop watching it. I, I said to myself then that I was never ever going to read this book again because it freaked me out so much. But here I am, gonna give it another go because, I don't know, either I'm a, a masochist or maybe I'm just hoping that it won't be as terrifying as it was to me at the time because I'm much further removed from the Netflix show now than I was then. Also, the book itself is just incredibly beautifully written. It's not even really that scary if you think about it. It's more like just an unsettling, creepy vibe the entire time. Prompt three. Consider this dismaying observation. This chamber has no windows and no doors, which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. Of course, there's always my way. So for this one, the obvious choice, I think, just based on, like, not being able to find a way out, uh, would be The Institute by Stephen King. Following a young boy whose parents are murdered in the middle of the night and the intruders who killed them uh, abduct him and bring him to this institute. And he does have a door <laughs> in his little chamber with a window in it. But there's no way out, and through this little window he can see that there are kids just like him all up and down the halls, also locked in their little chambers. But every so often, another kid goes missing, um, which is basically the only way out of this institution, but they are never seen again, so might not be a good thing that they are then going missing from the institute. I think this prompt fits this pretty well, and... I think this is going to be really unsettling. Oh, and I forgot to say for the other prompt, the house of haunt, um, nope, the haunting of Hill House. Um, I still do not own a physical copy. I don't know if I ever will, to be honest. Um, so I'm just going to listen to an audiobook again, which makes life easier for me because I can listen to that while I work, um, both saving time and entertaining me while I'm working. So. Prompt four. Serpents and spiders, tail of a rat, call in the spirits wherever they're at. So this prompt feels a little bit like witchy vibes a little bit. I know it's like Madame Leota, um, I believe it's her section um, speaking. And yeah, I just get very witchy vibes, but not like maybe right like modern witchy vibes, more like you know, your stereotypical wishy vibes, like Hocus Pocusy and like Macbeth or whatever, you know, the hee 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 kind of like stuff. So um, for this, I figured that I would do a reread of a book that I remember really liking when I was much younger, and that is Witch Witch, and this is by Eva Ibbotson, and this is basically um, following uh, this young witch called Belladonna. Uh, there is a wizard. He's basically like this handsome wizard of the north and he has decided he's going to marry and he wants to choose the worst or best witch basically. It's um, whoever performs the darkest piece of magic will become his bride. Belladonna is like hopelessly in love with him and desperately wants to like be the one that he chooses but she is a light witch. <laughs> She's a very good witch. She makes 
baby birds and flowers happen. She's not really the serpents and snakes, um, spider, tail of a rat type ex, basically. Um, and that, you know, she gets kind of made fun of by the other witches in the community. But, um, yeah, I think this is going to be like a lighter story to kind of break up the spooky stuff that I have the rest of the time. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I can't really remember much about this, but I think I remember it being, like, fairly cute. Prompt 5. Spooks come out for a swinging wake. Happy haunts materialize and begin to vocalize. Grim grinning ghosts come out to socialize. So for this prompt, just a swinging wake and grim grinning ghost just popping right on out to say hey. Uh, I would have to pick The Shining by Stephen King for this one. So I said before, I love this book. It is one of my favorite books of all time and over the past few years I have been reading it every usually October but sometimes November. So I wanted to do a reread of this anyway this year and I think it fits pretty perfectly into this prompt. Um, the Shining, if you don't know, basically follows young Danny Torrance, who is psychically gifted, and uh, his mother and father moving into the Overlook Hotel in Colorado for the winter to be like winter caretakers. But, you know, everyone is kind of dealing with their own inner demons, especially his now sober alcoholic father and something in the hotel is lurking and it really wants Danny. Prompt number six. Shrouded in a deft disguise, they pretend to terrorize. So for this one, I have decided this might be a stretch, but I've decided to go with The House of Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, if I remember correctly from little bits of this and also little bits that I've heard about this book, um, there is mysterious things and tricky characters throughout the book who may or may not be pretending to terrorize at some point. So this is a stretch because I've never actually finished this book before. I have tried and never actually, as you can see, gone around to finish it. Might be a stretch, but I, yeah, I think this counts. Our count's close enough. And I desperately want to finally, finally finish actually reading this book. This is, it's hard to explain this book, kind of. It is kind of a family chronicle in a sense that has to do with the Pynchon family who in the past there have been truly horrible members of the family and the family themselves were cursed due to decisions that one of the most horrible of the family members made and the house itself kind of has this creepy vibe to it. There are just a couple of other books that I am hoping to get to um, basically in the month. Uh, one is my book that I am still working on with like research and that is Hidden History of Vermont by Mark Bushnell. Um, I did not manage to get through this in September so I'm still working my way through it so this will be what I'm still going through. And then I also am still working my way through Beloved by Toni Morrison and I definitely plan on trying to finish this this month because I think it still has that creepy sad vibe that I'm looking for this month as well. So yes, as far as what I've been trying to do this year which is pick a book that I haven't finished or um, and uh, also a classic um, book I haven't finished, House of Seven Gables. This also technically counts as a classic. And I also have the Edgar Allan Poe collection, which I think is going to count as my classic for this month.
that is it you guys that is basically everything that i am hoping to read in the month of october um i think it's fairly doable this year it's a little bit less than what it was previously i'm hoping to get through all of those and hopefully be a little more present for a readathon which would be fun um you should definitely check out Emma's announcement video. I'll leave like a link in um, the description box below. And uh, if you're also participating, um, let me know. Let Emma know. Um, and let me know what spooky books that you are planning on getting through in October. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, thank you for always watching. If you feel like subscribing, please do so, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!